From the front, we can see that the quarterback's feet are slightly staggered and shoulder width apart. His hands are ready to take the snap and his eyes are up looking at the defense. Now, from the side, we can get a better look at the slight stagger of the quarterback's feet. We can see that the bend in his knees puts him in an athletic position with the weight on the balls of his feet. We use the yellow line to emphasize the angles created, including a subtle arc in the quarterback's back. As the quarterback prepares to take the snap, he must keep his butt down and chest up. Many coaches will use the phrase, big chest. Finally, the quarterback needs to see the entire defense as he is barking the cadence. The most important point to observe is the movement of the safeties at the snap of the ball. To begin any play, the quarterback must seat the ball. In other words, he needs to receive it cleanly from the center. Any fault in this simple step ruins the timing and execution of any play. This means to either bring the ball to your gut for a handoff or directly up to your chest to be ready to throw. The first step in the three-step drop is the most important. The quarterback must use this step to create throwing lanes and separation from the line of scrimmage. The majority of the quarterback's weight is to remain on his back foot. The short crossover step serves three purposes. One, it creates more distance from the line of scrimmage. Two, it contributes to the timing of the throw with the wide receiver's route. And three, it allows the quarterback to gain complete control of his body before he releases the ball. Again, we can see that the weight is on the back foot until it is transferred into the throw. As we zoom in on the footwork, we can see that the first step is the biggest and should be about three and a half yards from the line of scrimmage. After the crossover step, the quarterback should be about five yards from the line of scrimmage. Here, we can see that the quarterback has his weight mostly on the back foot, yet remains ready to throw by being on the ball of the foot. The front foot is light and he is on his toes. The weight transfer during the throw is apparent just by watching his feet. Let's take another look. As we take a look at the upper body, notice two distinct points. First, the front shoulder is slightly lower than the back. This is proper technique and improves the field of vision. Also, the ball remains vertical at all times. Next, as the quarterback drops, the ball remains at chest level and moves from breastplate to breastplate. The ball is not at his belly or in front of his face. The quarterback is not stiff. There's no reason to flex your arms. Last, the ball is not pointed out. The quarterback must remain fluent and relaxed through the entire drop. Let's take a minute to get a look at full speed repetitions. Notice the subtleties like knee bend, weight transfer, foot placement, eyes downfield, and so on. In the next reps, we set the QBT at 1.8 seconds. This is an average time for the ball to be released on a three-step throw. Set, go. Go. The QBT promotes great habits in a quarterback's stance and quickness. And for a quarterback, a tenth of a second is the difference between a completion and an interception. Set, go. The first thing we'll talk about here is the placement of the fingertips in hand pertaining to the grip. It is imperative that as you get the grip, the ring finger will be placed over the second eyelet of the football. The middle finger will be somewhat towards the bottom of the white stripe, and the forefinger, which is the last finger to leave the ball, is the adjustment finger to keep the ball tight as it's released. The grip can vary slightly, but you must realize that if the grip feels awkward at first, it will become comfortable and natural with repetitions. The quarterback should have a firm grip on the ball, not too tight and not too loose. Also, there should be space between the ball and the quarterback's hand, as we can see in this picture. 
The quarterback should draw the ball straight back such that the point is actually away from the target. Notice that the level of the ball does not drop. We highlight the shoulders to show how on the follow through each shoulder replaces the other. The throwing hand completes its motion at the hip. Coaches will say to put your hand in the opposite pocket. From this view, we get a great look at the quarterback keeping his elbow high. You'll notice at the release, the elbow is significantly above the shoulder. We'll get one more look at great throwing mechanics. From the back, we can see the positioning of the shoulders at the release. The line demonstrates that the throwing shoulder is above the other. This will also aid in keeping the elbow high. The release of the ball determines its flight. The forefinger is the last to leave the ball and affects either the spiral or the wobble. A smooth release with a sharp snap at the wrist can add to the velocity.